It was the summer after graduation, and Jennifer was up late packing for a camping trip with her friends. She had the window open as she sat there folding clothes when she suddenly saw a hand coming through the gap in the screen of her window. Jennifer screamed, and the hand flew back. She was stunned, but it could have just been her younger brother pranking her. She got up and looked out the window and saw the figure of a man staring back at her. Jennifer ran into her brother's room but saw him there playing video games. They called the police, who came and searched the area, but they found nothing. Officers warned her and her parents to lock the windows and doors, but the mother had a feeling that he would come back. And as it turns out, mother's intuition was right. She went outside and waited in the back porch. And after 20 minutes, she saw a man dressed in black in their backyard. He hid behind a tree and slowly worked his way towards Jennifer's window. The mother yelled something to the stranger, and he took off running. Police came back out, and again, found no trace of him. Jennifer never opened that window again, not even the curtains. Her parents installed some motion detecting lights, and that seemed to be the end of that. About six months later, Jennifer and her friend got an apartment downtown together, excited as this was their first place outside of home, and they are finally living in the city. The downside was that it was street parking only, and after a few weeks. Jennifer's car was broken into. Oddly enough, nothing was taken, but a single rose was sat on the passenger seat. This creeped her out for sure, but she vowed to be vigilant and safe. She always tried to park close to the entrance near the lights, but it was often difficult to get those spots, and she would have to park farther away. Things quickly began escalating at this point. Jennifer's car was broken into at least once a week. Most of the time, a flower was left. But once a pair of men's underwear was there instead, and even more strangely, a bag of Tootsie Rolls, weird because it was her favorite candy. This made Jennifer wonder if the person knew her personally, and she started to become suspicious of everyone. There was a laundry machine in the basement of the apartment, and one day Jennifer went down to get a load that finished drying. As she started to fold, she realized that all her bras and panties were gone. By the time the first letter arrived, she had already started making plans to move elsewhere. The letter described a love for her that had been going on for years. He noted things that proved he had been watching Jennifer closely. Not long after, Jennifer was able to arrange for another friend to take over her lease, and she moved in with a new friend on the other side of the city. It was a secured building and had an underground parking garage that was only accessible to tenants. She felt more secure, and the extra money spent was well worth the peace of mind. Things were quiet for a few months, and then her roommate got a boyfriend. There was something odd about Ashley's new boyfriend, and her friends were wary of him from the very beginning. For one, he reached out to her. Another reason was that Matt was very good-looking, and while Ashley was a wonderful person. She wasn't the type you would typically expect someone like him to date. Ashley was thrilled. She never had a boyfriend and really felt like he was her prince charming. Jennifer, however, thought he was weird and creepy the moment they met. She had deleted her Facebook account when the initial stalking began, but created a dummy account to learn more about Matt. It didn't look like he really knew any of his friends in real life. There were only pictures of himself, and the rest of the information was vague. Jennifer and her friends gently tried to discourage Ashley from seeing Matt. He technically hadn't done anything wrong, but he was just so strange. She would immediately get defensive and would shut the conversation down. Matt started to spend more time at the apartment, and Jennifer found herself finding any excuse to avoid coming home. One day, she came back home from work and found Matt on the couch alone, drinking a beer. Ashley had been called into work, and she told her that he could just hang out. Jennifer had no desire to spend any time with him, so she grabbed the beer and a snack and headed off to her room and shut the door. About 30 minutes or so, he knocked on Jennifer's door and suggested they watch some TV and get to know each other better because they both loved Ashley. Not wanting to engage in conversation, Jennifer focused on the movie. But at one point, she glanced over to Matt, and he was staring at her with a smile on his face. Jennifer snapped at him and said, "What?" As he just continued to smile and said, "I just can't believe it." Believed what? He said nothing and went back to watching the movie. She had no idea what he was talking about, but the interaction had every hair standing up on her body. 
She excused herself and locked the door to her room. Another month or so went on, and Jennifer had managed to avoid being home for much beyond sleeping and showering. Matt practically lived there and had even brought a bunch of his things into Ashley's room. Jennifer didn't want to move again, but was beginning to look for other options. On Ashley and Matt's six-month anniversary, there was a huge bouquet of flowers on the table and an already opened card propped up next to it. Jennifer was curious, so she opened the card and her heart started beating through her chest. Without even reading the words Matt wrote, the handwriting was exactly the same as the one her stalker had sent. Jennifer had kept them as evidence and dug them out of her desk for comparison. The handwriting was unique and identical. Matt was the stalker. Jennifer called the police and as they were on their way, she called Ashley and asked her to come over, terrified to tell her the truth because she knew that her heart would be shattered. The police took a statement from Jennifer and went to Ashley's work to get more information from her and ended up breaking the news. Apparently, Ashley called Matt after and left a furious message even though the cops told her not to say anything and he completely disappeared after that. There was no Matt or anyone matching his resemblance at the place he said he worked. Ashley had never been to his apartment because he said he would be staying with his friends while trying to save money for a trip to Europe. His family lived out of state and she said that she had never met a friend of his because he said they had a falling out because he was choosing to spend so much time with her. It was all lies and in the end, she was dating a stranger. For all they knew, Matt may not have even been his real name. He had left the duffel bag in the apartment that was full of gym clothes but in one compartment, there were about 10 pictures of Jennifer. All were taken from far away with the exception of one of her sleeping. The sheets were current, so it had to have been at the current apartment before she started locking her bedroom door. A few pictures dated back to before the incident at her parents' house, which was further evidence that it was him as well. Two pairs of missing underwear were there, and Jennifer shudders to think of what he did with the rest. There was also a Starbucks lid with her red lipstick marks, and a necklace she hadn't even noticed she was missing. The police never tracked him down. Jennifer accepted an opportunity overseas and got out of there. But ever since then, Jennifer deleted all her social media accounts. She became very low profile, looks over her shoulder wherever she goes, as part of her continues to worry if Matt will ever resurface again.